Please join me in a pledge. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you remain standing for a minute, please. This past week, Hampton's lost two of the uh, fine citizens, two pillars of the, uh, of the town, Sandy Buck and Art Moody. They probably did more for this town than most people have ever done. They've served on many, many boards, and I want to offer the condolences to their families, and let's have a moment of silence for both Sandy and Art Moody. Thank you. Okay. Public comment. Is there anybody here who wishes to make public comment? Seeing none, we'll move to announcements and community calendar. Regina? Um, nothing, Mr. Chairman, just that uh, my condolences to both the family and friends of Art Moody and uh, Sandy Buck. Ditto on that. And the Hampton Historical Association has their annual pig roast this coming weekend, uh, Saturday at the Tuck Museum. Uh, should be a good event. Nothing, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Okay, and I would like to just take a moment that uh, to rec to uh, congratulate and say how what a fine group of lifeguards we have in Hampton at the state. Oftentimes we're at arguing with the state about things, but I was on North Beach a couple of weeks ago, and there was one lifeguard that I was watching, and all of a sudden he came flying down. He went out in the water and he helped the little girl get in, and then he immediately went down to do something else, and then there was two guys that were going to be surfing in the wrong place. He immediately sent them to the right place. Somebody, the dog, he, and I'd never seen anybody do such a good job. And I went up to him and I said, you are doing the best job I've ever seen. So I'd like to congratulate all of them. And I think that comes from the top down, that they do a super job. So congratulations. All right, with that, we'll go to the consent agenda. Entertainment license, Smutty Nose Brewery, 105 Toll Farm Road. Taxi driver licenses, Sagina. Sacconi, Surfside Taxi, Paula Himmer, a Abba Taxi, Use of Town Property, Island Path Parking Lot, Ashworth Ar Avenue Parking Lot, Church Street Parking Lot, for Smutty Nose Rock Fest Half Marathon on 10-1, Road Closure Permit, 14 Survey Street, Hot Neighborhood Block Party, 0909, Seafood Festival Sidewalk Vendor Permits, The Shirt Factory, Impression Beachwear, Tate's Crafts, Chillex T-Shirt City, Maggie's Beachwear, and Seaside Market. Termination of lease, 3-5 H Street. Quick Claim Deeds, 3-H Street to Ragu Hotel, Arnold Property, and Martell Property to SAU 90. Permission to use Island Path Parcel Map 281, Lot 1, Salt Mars Educational Walk, 0916. I motion to move the consent agenda. Second. All in favor? Unanimous. Approval of the minutes from August 7th, 2017. I'll make the motion. So move, second. All in favor? Unanimous. Appointments, Chief Ayotte and Deputy Chief Kennedy. 2000 Pierce Dash Pumper Acquisition. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Good evening. And to the board. Uh, it's our pleasure to come before you this evening to discuss the purchase of the reserve engine, and for that, it's also my pleasure to give the floor to Deputy Kennedy. Well, we'd be happy to know that I didn't have to go to Hawaii to find the truck. Oh, good. good. Uh, after a uh, extensive, long, countrywide search, I come to find out that these trucks are hard to find if you want to find the right one in the right shape. But finally, I found one in Warminster, Pennsylvania. Um, traveled down there last week, looked at it. Um, Funny story is I was as I was driving down there I called my my pump service people up in Maine and asked them if when I was down there if I could just you know give them a call and see if he could guide me through a couple of different things if I had, had a question and he said that he just so happens he had two of his guys in the very next town over going to our advanced pump school uh, he wow. sent them over in, in the summertime they went through that truck with me until about 10 o'clock at night gave it the thumbs up gave me a couple of little pointers that were good negotiating tools and. Um, with all that, I negotiate what I think is a great price for the town. 
good shape. Trey Merrill's are clean as a whistle, no rust. I think it's going to serve the town of Hampton well. I'm just looking here to get your blessings to go ahead and get that truck in the town. Any questions from the board, Regina? So seventy-five thousand. It was seventy-five thousand. With a couple of things that we pointed out to them that day, I was able to negotiate a price down to fifty-five thousand. Nice. No questions. Thank you. Rusty, didn't you just buy a? a I, I bought one slightly <laughs> older than this one, but uh, <laughs> now you tell me. <laughs> but it's not as big as this one, that's for sure. But uh, no, I know uh, Deputy Kennedy has done a lot of work on this. I mean, he's made a couple of trips. He's, He's tried to do the best for the town, and I think uh, he's done an excellent job here. Yes, sir. No questions. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and thank you for, you know, searching us out and doing the research and getting us a good price. So do I have a motion? Do we need a motion? Yes. Yes. I'll make the motion that we allow them to purchase the truck. I will second. Second. All in favor? Approved. Unanimous. Good thank job, guys. Thank you very much. Nice. Right. Have a great night. Good night. Wish everything was that easy, huh? Yeah, I guess right. <laughs> Director and Deputy Director of DPW, Chris and Jen. Talk about stormwater. Good evening. Good evening. First, I have to say I apologize. Uh, last week I was putting together this information for you for the Green Street, uh, Genshin Road area uh, corrective action plan. And I'm apparently, instead of sending you the memo and the backup, uh, proposal from the vendor. I sent you the proposal twice. Just want to make sure you had it. You know? So I didn't send you. But Regina tells me she has it. The, uh, yeah. the, uh, the, 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 the actual uh, my my cover memo and my my supporting recommendation. Backing up, um, we had a community meeting with the residents from. Green, Gentian, and Meadow Pond uh, several weeks ago. Uh, as a matter of fact, July 27th, we promised them some action. And the actions were um, one that we'd come down the next day and the following days to pump away water if it so built up. And we did so between the 27th and uh, agreed to pump it here this 27th and 30th of August. Um, secondly, that um, they have an alternative parking solution during flooding events. Uh, you handled that with a uh, uh, basically a placard system so that they can park their vehicles in high dry areas. And thirdly, uh, we told them that we'd approach the State Wetlands Bureau to see if we could achieve an emergency permit. Uh, we, in fact, did that on August 8th. Met with Jennifer and I met with Evan Lewis. Uh, he's very receptive to the concerns of these residents. And um, we agreed on, if you will, a limited dredge from where our outfall pipes are to an existing swale that's, that leads down into Metal Pond. So it wouldn't be t something new. It's going to be more like a maintenance dredge. Uh, I expressed that to uh, Mr. <coughs> Morrison of Swamp Inc. He came back with the attached proposal before you uh, somewhere between forty-five and $75,000. i have sent him additional instruction asking him to tighten up his proposal because we don't I've never been uh, akin to a proposal before you that had a range for services, uh, something I knew that would probably be foreign to the board. Um, so that's why I'm not actually recommending this contract. But what I was, am here for is uh, to get your blessings to proceed with an emergency permit for this dredge and to continue uh, negotiations with Swamp Inc. Uh, for project costs not to exceed 50000 um, the last part, or the next to last part that I put in my memo that I was wanted to see if you wanted to fund this out of the uh, 267 that we received from the state, Jennifer told me, no, 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 no. So uh, <laughs> I had to take, well, she's already spent the money. I figured that. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> we gave it to her. It's gone. Because yeah. <laughs> so, she, she wasn't at the office when I typed this on the last day of the week uh, at that time. So, um, as I say, um, it, I would need to come back to this board once I do have a final contract, if that's what you choose me to do. Um, but I, we are bringing this forward tonight because we just really want it to be proactive to those uh, residents because that's what we promised them we would do. I did hear back from Mike Morrison's people this afternoon. 
Uh, Mike's going to be working on the proposal. I'll get it in the next couple of days. But he didn't have a revised proposal for me. And that's all I have. Regina? Okay. That sounds good. I, I agree with you. I, that's a $30,000 is pretty... Uh, yeah, it's very wide. It so, pretty. yeah, I think we should move forward with it. Rusty? I agree. I think, like she said, when you come in with a, a $35,000 or $30,000 right. thing, I mean, we we got to be accountable for what we do, and I think that's that's a lot of money to yep. try to raise out of the budget. And that's why I'm not asking. Yeah, to your, okay. To but I think, we, I think we still need to move forward, as right. you suggested. Yep. Phil? Negative, sir. Thank you. Now, so all you're asking for tonight is to apply for the permit. Apply to the permit and, and negotiate. And, and, and permission to continue to negotiate with okay. Swamp Bank. And we're only doing this with one company because? One company because it's actually very specialized equipment. They actually have an excavator that, um, given the type of feet and, and um, <clears throat> tracks it has on it, less than four pounds of pressure in the marsh. Uh, the truck that they're going to use to haul the muck out with, less than four, th four pounds per square inch, which is really what the Wetlands Bureau would require. Uh, so it's all very, very specialized equipment. Uh, we were talking with another vendor, but he couldn't get there till November. Um, we told him that, thanks, but you know we, we've got to keep moving forward, that this was uh, more imperative than that. And um, he understood that. He said if it didn't work out with the prior contractor, give him a call, but um, that's why we'd like to keep moving forward with Swamp. Now, at one time you had said that you were worried that if you do one thing, it might cause another problem. Are, are we pretty sure that what we're going to do is not going to cause any other problems down the road or we down the line? We are because we're going into an existing swale. Uh, there's a massive vegetation behind this neighborhood. There is an existing swale that comes about three quarters of the way across. It stops or has filled in about 100 feet from their backyard. And what he's essentially going to be doing is opening up that 100 feet. First, taking out all the Phragmites, literally mowing them down, um, take those out, and um, then we can visually see what we're at, and that's when we reopen that swale. And that was the discussion with Eben uh, for the emergency permit and why we need to work on the scope a little bit. This would not be creating any new swales. This is reestablishing the hydraulics that should be there now. <clears throat> yeah, go. I just want people to know that by mowing the, the Phragmites down, that does not do away with them. Correct. That only cuts down what is there, but the roots are there, and that's what will grow back. Right. So it just, I just want people, they're going to see, oh, that's all taken care of. No, that's not. Uh, this is going to right. It's maintenance, correct. Yeah. Okay. And the length of time for this work would take, do we? It would only take two or three days when, when he's out there. Yeah, to literally do it, it would be done. I'll make the motion that we allow him to continue with the uh, the bidding process and the, and the permitting process. I'll second. Okay, Rusty, Regina, all in favor? Unanimous? Sounds Thank good. You. All right. All right. Those people are happy with you doing a good job well we're doing what we promised to do and that's yeah. that's the most important thing to me is when we give a promise that we yeah. we continue and follow up with that yes. well, we, we got them yep. here uh, I'm hearing good things all over town people are happy on Drake side Road sure. you know it took a little bit longer but they're, they're, mm -hmm. they're appreciative the road is back open although it isn't paved yet but that's coming mm -hmm. but the everybody that sees it is amazed at what what it looks like that's opened up and, uh, and people are really appreciative of that. Okay. Yeah, that's good. And High Street, when will they do that water main, do you know? That they have to, I mean, the repaving of the re repaving. They're coordinating, sort of working with our pavers. They'll be cutting out that section and repaving it down okay. the width of the pavement so okay. we don't have a patch in the middle of what we've just done. And will that be much of a job to do or no? No. We've also spoken to the foreman about having uh, Aquarian's contractor also uh, repave, um, do the final paving uh, for the work that they did down uh, the west side of Lafayette and down Park Ave, because I noticed that settled, and we, we don't want that to go through the winter that way. We're, we're going to hold them to sorry. it and just sorry, get them to <laughs> do a final paving on that also. Yeah, it's a little bumpy now from town. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, well, that's, they've had two sinkholes. 
they've come back very quickly to, to, to repair those, but uh, that's not uh, a situation we want to tolerate for the, for the winter or for much longer, to be honest. Super. Mr. Mr. Chairman, may I yes, just go may. on one other issue? Go ahead, Regina, if yours is going to be short, Mr. Chairman, thank you. It's short. I know you guys are doing a great job. Yeah, Drake's side, too, I heard the same things about that. But I do have one question <coughs> just so that I know it's a completely different flooding situation they got going on down there. And thank you very much. Like, we put out all the oh, the placards for the parking for all the people down the on West has Hobson, Brown, and yeah. uh, Manchester. Yeah. Yeah. But is there anything I can actually – I know she sent out a really nice letter to all – the governor and yes. all the reps and everything. Is there anything else that I should have them work on? Or right now, my understanding from working with the Deb and yeah, see, I did is that, and so we, and that, that's what we have been doing. Just so everybody understands, um, we've made one point of contact, and so when we were talking about the parking, so that everybody could get it, it would be distributed to all the residents as a whole who wanted the information. Um, right now, what we're working on is an RFQ so that we can look at what it's going to cost to do these studies. Okay. Um, that's really the next step for down there. Okay, great. Thank you. Good. Thank I'm you. Good. Mr. Good. Chairman, may I please? Yes, you may. And I'd like to say hi to my uh, granddaughters back there, Benton and Scout. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> hi, girls. Hi, thanks for coming. Um, hey, uh, right on cue, and it wasn't planned, but um, I wanted to talk about uh, groundwater and uh, Mr. Welch and I talked about it. He's going to have it in his uh, report tonight. But I wanted to, uh, while you were here, and uh, we can come back to it, but it's the uh, uh, January 31st, 2017 letter that went to um, this town. And uh, from my perspective, um, in terms of arsenic, in terms of uh, that mound there with uh, manganese, um, both carcinogens, um, in groundwater and surface water, we've got children playing uh, right at the base of that hill. I know the board has read this. Uh, this is a very, very serious issue. This is a very, very serious report. Um, arsenic and magnesium, magnesium, manganese concentrations uh, at the monitoring wells. Um, these uh, contaminants are consistent with previous sampling. Mr. Welch is going to address this in terms of um, uh, notification of the public. There's uh, ch charts. There's bar graphs here. I, and I know the board does, uh, having read this, um, finds this uh, demanding of uh, the most celeritous uh, and exigent notification to the public. Uh, again, uh, wherever that drift is going, um, I know that water seeks a low level mm -hmm. and that we, in, in fact, have um, uh, children playing uh, right next to that. And I just like your comment, I've highlighted a couple of uh, spots. And uh, Mr. Welsh will address it during this town meeting or have a dialogue. But I wanted to uh, put this on the front burner. And uh, I would like to warn the public, uh, and I think that kind of report deserves it again. We got it um, last week, um, and it's dated uh, mid-January 2017. Mm -hmm. Please, sir. This is the, um, what Slocum Dean is referring to is, um, if the, our contractor, ATC slash Cardinal, every year has to do a summation of what they obtained for air quality and water quality results below the landfill and in the uh, surface waters around the landfill. Every year they, they take all three sampling results plus the four rounds of air quality monitoring and pair them together in this report, which that's why it's dated January because it summarizes the year for 2016. Um, it also has in it three quarters of it is the actual backup data of what they found. It also has a lot of historical data um, for prior years. Um, not much change from year to year um, because uh, water tables fluctuate. A number of these monitoring wells are down anywhere from 15 to 30 feet. So that depending on whether there's active groundwater is whether they'll actually even grab a sample from these. Uh, a lot of them you'll sometimes <coughs> see they'll say uh, probed or capped or they purge the well is the technical term and sometimes they end up with no water whatsoever out of them. Uh, two years ago we were allowed by the state to stop sampling for things like VOCs, volatile organic compounds. These are the things that can go airbound, um, can cause respiratory issues. 
um, very wisely. I think the board at the time and the manager said, no, let's continue with the sampling program so that we have good baseline data should this ever come up in the future. So we are complying with the, those things that the state wants us to uh, apply for. Um, but the, the iron and the manganese are natural background constituents of all, pretty much all New Hampshire water sources. I know I deal with manganese in my neck of the woods. Uh, just due to the fact that they're all, a lot of them are bedrock well grade uh, aquifer sources, and the manganese is naturally releasing out of the the, the, the wells. Same thing with the arsenic. Okay, uh, and, and how about the arsenic readings? What does that report say about arsenic? To a layman, uh, it seems uh, of concern. You, you highlighted those specifically? Yeah, and take your time. It's an important issue. Sure. Yeah. Testing or the what they call the, um, the upper limit of what they'd want to see, what NHDES says they'd want to see in a well, is 0 0.01 uh, milligrams per liter, which is very thin. We're finding, um, let's see, 1,000 times less than that in each one of the wells. So it's almost, and in a couple of instances, they're saying less than um, 4,000 parts, so it, it's even less than 1,000. In other words, it's a it's a diluted 1,000 more times than what the state says is the acceptable okay. or upper limit. And there's a graph there, the, the graph that shows the arsenic levels? Yep. Can you interpret that graph, please? Sure. Mm, it's referring to this one here. Right. Yeah. What's that? What's that tell us? Well, the the upper limit was right here from NHDES. So in most of the wells, in, in most of the time periods, going back to September of 03, you can see most of the time, and especially in the drier years, it's way down there. Would you? Did you get a? You got one spike May of 15, then it dropped right back down. But this is your upper limit. Okay, what does the upper limit mean? The upper limit means that through testing analysis, through probably uh, cooperation with the EPA, they've determined that that is the upper limit that anyone should drink or even experience. Okay. And is there a possibility when we're near that upper limit and we've been down in gentian, we're talking about, we're talking about things wet. Uh, we're all very familiar with that area. Um, so is the potentiality that those playing fields and where people recreate with their small children, like those two little girls there, um, that there's uh, arsenic in that groundwater? I would say not. Okay. Where because is these are monitoring wells 30 feet below the ground. Okay. Now, if they were playing in the channel leading out to the marsh, possibly when it, re when it mixes with a natural groundwater surface, you might come in contact with some manganese or iron, but not to this level and certainly not in, in surface waters. Okay. But I think it would be reasonable, if that is a concern, to add to our testing protocol another testing site, and that could be like at uh, the swale that runs along Hard Arts Way just before it gets to the, I call it the ice arena, but it's the inline skating arena. There is at times surface water there. Mm -hmm. And that would probably would be prudent to test that, just to say. And does that what, what does that run out to the marsh? Yes. Okay. And there's people that fish off of that tide mill I've seen in there. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So that we've got people fishing uh, off of off of that with that arsenic level, uh, and I've, I've read the, the symbol codes for that. Those. Uh, those uh, elements, and, and I can't quote them now, but uh, it's, it specifically addresses wildlife and fish. Mm -hmm. And then we've got people fishing. Uh, I know I paddleboard there. I know people jump in there. So I think it's an unreported thing. Mr. Welch has brought it up, um, but arsenic is a deadly, deadly, deadly yes. uh, 
element. And uh, I know Mr. Welsh is going to address it. You were here, and I wanted you to, uh, to, to, to share in that. And then Mr. Welsh has got a way forward in terms of reporting and website applications. Okay. And, and, and I'll grab that back at your leisure, and thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Anybody else? To that effort, we also reached out to our company. We know that the Aquarian is testing for PFOAs. And I think the question was raised earlier in the week, well, what would it cost Hampton to also test the PFOA, especially with respect to the landfill, um, less than $5,000 a year. But if that is something that the board wants to investigate in the future, we can add that to the, to the testing protocol. Thank you. We're good. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. Thank you. Uh, we will go to the town manager's report. Thank Mr. You. Chairman, members of the board, uh, everybody I think has noticed that there are a few, a few less pine trees on Academy Avenue. Uh, we did cut down a number of defective pines there. The Public Works Department actually had them tested and found that uh, I believe it was five trees had to come down. Uh, they have been taken down and um, the trunk sections have been removed. They were removed this weekend, so the road is free of that debris. Uh, the stumps are still there. They will be ground, the chips removed, and the area loamed and seeded as they run through the process. Um, high street paving, as you heard, is completed uh, as of the last report. Um, unfortunately, during the final pavement, uh, rolling a water main that was defective broke and the new pavement had to be excavated the pipe had been repaired and new pavement added back in the near future the section of the roadway where the water main broke will need to be removed that is the new pavement the bed, uh, roadbed needs to be stabilized and new pavement replaced back in there so there's there's no ripple effect in the roadway that when they had tested the roadway following the uh, the break there was some play in the roadway itself so that needs to be stabilized. Quickside Road uh, Bridge Abutment work has been by and large completed except for the final paving of the roadway. Uh, the roadway is open to vehicle traffic, but caution is urged as the roadway surface is gravel. That means stones can be thrown up. New pavement will be added in the very near future. Speed should be kept at 20 miles an hour until the pavement is in place. Please remember the roadway is still under construction and therefore is still technically closed. I have a number of other items here, Mr. Chairman. Um, we've been responding to the uh, flood problems down on uh, Gentian and Green and, and uh, Meadow. And uh, fortunately, this weekend, uh, while well, we had crews checking the area because we had uh, tides in excess of 10, 10 feet, uh, there was no flooding at all, which is good. There were a couple of puddles in the street, and that was it. Uh, we're not quite sure. Somebody said maybe the uh, the eclipse had something to do with it, but I, I have a feeling it probably has something to do more with the wind blowing in from the northwest, uh, which forces the water away from those areas and, and down through the harbor. Um, Cornerstone uh, is in the process of setting up their groundbreaking, and the board is, is, is invited on Tuesday, September 5th at 10 to, to 12, uh, 10 a.m. to 12 noon. Uh, and I think I've given you all a flyer to, to indicate when, where, how, and why, so to speak. Uh, we have had a notice from the Department of uh, Safety Division of Motor Vehicles, uh, which is going to cause us to amend our ordinances with regards to dump stickers, because there is a new sticker coming out, uh, which will go into effect October 1st, which is going to go in the, in the driver's side lower front corner on each vehicle which is where our packing sticker goes. So we're going to have to amend that ordinance to, uh, in fact, move those so that we're not in conflict with the state. I think we heard earlier there was a, a pig roast coming for the Historical Society, uh, and that uh, tickets are $20. Uh, to speak to a member of the Historical Society, students are $10. Uh, under 8 is free. And uh, I know there's a lot of ticket holders sitting around town, so we should be able to get you a ticket. The board is cordially invited uh, to the American Legion post number 35, the Hamptons, uh, on Monday, September 11, 2017, at 6 p.m. There will be a, a, an additional dedication to the uh, the uh, monument there for the 9/11 uh, 
those who have fallen in service to our country since that incident, uh, and they will be indu inducting a, a, a new name on that uh, on that uh, stone that they have up front there, the memorial stone. Um, the American Legion uh, has been continuing to sponsor the uh, the Hit the Beach, and they're going to continue to do that. They do a wonderful project with the Wounded Warrior Project. Uh, if you if you wish to support that, please do contact Post 35. I know they can use the support. Um, our illustrious council has uh, put together something for your signature later on, which is the quick claim deed to exchange the property for the new school from the town, uh, which will help get that building completed in short order. Uh, I also have some information dealing with, and we talked about it a second ago, the groundwater that we've all been worried about. I've been in contact today with uh, Aquarion. I did talk to uh, the State Department of uh, De De Department of Environmental Services in Concord, and I have uh, had communication with the Department of uh, Environmental Protection for the federal government. The reports of the um, high numbers in PFCs, uh, which were contained in one well, well number six. Uh, have been confirmed. Well number six for Aquarian is offline. I talked to the superintendent today and I also talked to one of the engineers today. Uh, it's going to stay offline until they find out what's causing those readings. Uh, and they they have also tested the, uh, the residuals from all the wells that go into number six into the tank. And um, <clears throat> there's no detectable limit in the tank. So they're concerned that this may be the result of something that's been done wrong. We don't know. They don't know. The federal government doesn't know, uh, and the state government does not know either. We have received uh, itemized reports and tests from uh, the Department of Environmental Services and from Aquarion, and what we're going to do is we're going to set up a section of the website where those reports as received will be online, including our own reports from our own landfill, um, so people can know what's going on. Uh, it's important that people understand that some of these constituencies uh, are extremely dangerous, uh, although we have not reached uh, the level where we have to ask people not to drink the water. That's quite a ways away, we hope. Uh, right now, uh, 70 is the limit, 70 parts per trillion, and they are currently at 25 parts per trillion in well number six. There are a couple of other wells that have minor, uh, minor amounts below that, uh, but I can tell you that having talked to Concord and having talked to uh, the EPA, that they're, they're very concerned with those readings and they want to find out where they're coming from and why they're coming there, coming into the well system. I know the Environmental Protection Agency and, and DES have in fact been testing the area around the airport and they're testing the individual wells that service people in Northampton around the airport to see whether or not they can find any trace elements of the PFCs. <coughs> Uh, I, we, we do do a test of uh, volatile organic compounds, and, and I can tell you that Aquarian did the same test, and they're all within parameters and limits of the Environmental Protection Agency regulations currently. So I don't think we have a problem there. Uh, there are a number of constituents that scare people. Uh, we talked about one briefly, which is arsenic. Uh, arsenic is a, is a uh, constituent uh, to bedrock and, 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 uh, and gravel-packed wells in New Hampshire for some strange reason, as is uranium uh, to some degree. Um, but arsenic is very common. Uh, it, in 2003, the Environmental Protection Agency lowered the standard for arsenic from 70 parts per million to 10 parts per million which has caused a number of uh, water plants to build treatment systems because arsenic can be taken out of the water stream. I think the highest readings that we had were in Seabrook, so it's in this general area. This is the, the end of the line for everything that's going to go out to the ocean underground, and, and uh, we've tapped it successfully for wells. <coughs> we want people to be conscious about what's going on. 
it's important that they understand that these constituencies, while they're not at a danger level, are there. And if they increase, they will be a danger level if they go above the threshold minimums as set by the EPA and the state. And that is 70 parts per trillion for PFCs. There are 24 types of PFCs. Only two are measured uh, because they are dangerous to human beings. The other 22, I don't have a reading on. But I can tell you that uh, the, of the other 20, if we take all 24 and run them together, well number six comes in at 87 for a reading. Uh, we understand from the EPA that that's not a danger signal because those 22 are supposedly not dangerous. I don't know that for sure. Uh, I just, I'm concerned that, that in fact that material is happening. I can tell you that uh, the EPA is ordering additional test wells to be put around the landfill uh, up at Coakley. And uh, I'm sure that they're going to coordinate that with the Department of Environmental Services and watch very, very closely about where that material is going and where the plume is going. We're concerned, of course, with any plume migration towards this area because we have a number of gravel-packed wells that already show PFCs. And there's a lot of the wells that, that are owned by Aquarian run right up Mill Road. And those particular uh, constituents that come out of those wells go into our drinking water. And we don't want them there, period. I don't think Aquarian does either, and I know that the state and federal agencies don't either. But they're keeping a very close eye on it. We will be posting all of that information and all of the tests that we receive on our website. We do test three times a year at our landfill. Those will automatically go up as soon as received, along with the annual summation, which the director talked about earlier. Uh, Aquarian is testing more frequently. They're only required to test a couple of times a year. Uh, as you can understand, because of the readings they've received, they're testing more quickly than that. And they are doing monthly tests at the moment. So we will put those up as received, and we've requested them. If uh, anything comes in from the Environmental Protection Agency or, or DES, we'll also put that information up on the web website so people can see it and uh, hopefully understand what, what the constituent levels are. It will contain <coughs> the charts that uh, Mr. Bean talked about a little earlier, uh, which are uh, required to be filed with us for our website uh, for our landfill. I'll make the observation that you know, I was told some time ago that the town had lucked out in the in the landfill because they closed it one year before the uh, environmental regulations come into effect to require a bottom liner. So there is no bottom liner in our landfill in town. Everything leaches right down into the groundwater. Uh, there is a top liner to try to shed the water away. Mm -hmm. But uh, there is a natural decomposition in landfills <coughs> that will take hundreds of thousands, if not millions of years, to decompose the material that's in it. And during that period of time, all those materials are going to be flushed into the groundwater. The groundwater exits from our landfill in a generally southeasterly direction towards the ocean. Uh, where it goes from there, I don't know. I don't think anybody else does. Without additional test wells, we can't tell. But we are going to keep a very, very close eye on that. And we are going to do uh, PFC testing. I've instructed Public Works to do that. The money will be in the budget for next year. It's important that we know what's coming out of that landfill. So I think we don't test for now. Thank you. Regina. So would you say that uh, Department of Environmental Services and Environmental Protection Agency have been uh, more, uh, what do I say, addressing our concerns a little bit more? I think the letter they received put them on notice that we're concerned. They need to do something. They need to plan additional test wells to show if there is a plume where it's going, where it's going to go to, and what it's going to affect. Right, because this whole thing was like 24, 24 PFCs and only two were tested for because supposedly only two are bad for you. Supposedly. I don't, you know, like you just stated, the arsenic level was higher and then they lowered it. So. I would just like to make sure that they test whatever they need to test. And Coakley was actually the same thing was done over there that was done at landfill, uh, top only. Yeah. So I'm glad that we're going to be doing the P PFC testing. Over we have to. Well. It's, yeah. it's a requirement as far Definitely. as I'm concerned. Definitely. Rusty? No, I think we're heading in the right direction. Mr. Bean. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I've, I've got some uh, situational awareness, and then I, I think it will behoove the uh, town attorney to, to comment on it. And uh, I know Mr. Welch and uh, the town attorney and assistant town manager on it. But it, it starts off with uh, none other than Max, uh, Max Sullivan's uh, um, 17 August that a Hampton well, uh, and that's our water well, um, uh, has been closed for presence of PFCs. That's number one. Uh, so this is serious business. Uh, and uh, it's serious business for Hampton, much like uh, that last report that the Public Works Director commented on. Um, I would like to thank uh, Regina Barnes and uh, Representative Messner, Representative Cushing, this board, Mr. Welch, uh, and the executive staff uh, for their efforts on it. And it's, uh, it's the large bore, strategic, scientifically important stuff that the uh, Board of Selectmen and the executive staff are tasked with doing in addition to uh, uh, providing leadership and these fine young folks um, running a town on behalf of the citizens and taxpayers and visitors. But uh, as I move on, um, uh, Regina asked a question, and uh, um, purposely so, and purposely so, uh, that um, is, is the EPA and the DES uh, being responsive enough? And, and I would say the answer is no. Uh, and we're talking about um, perhaps some conflicts of interest with uh, the folks that do run the Coakley Landfill Group uh, and uh, how that has been going on. I've been hearing about the Coakley Landfill. It's a super fun waste site um, since I was in my 30s. I don't think I had many gray hairs uh, when, I, when it first came out. Um, and it's, it's been problematic. Those that have offered solutions to that, um, uh, their courses of action um, are, are now our problems. They went with the lowest uh, common denominator, the lowest cost to fix it. They were talking a, a, a concept called attenuation, uh, and that is a, a hazardous waste site over there that was ours as a landfill, and we did our thing. Uh, this uh, is probably the most important issue that I've uh, dealt with as a, a selectman uh, in uh, my two terms here and my three terms in another New Hampshire town, uh, but certainly the most important here in this town, and it's carcinogens in our water. Uh, there are 20 times um, the environmental safe limit uh, in this emerging science, and Mr. Welch is exactly right with these uh, um, carcinogens, that the science is not exact and it's, it's developing, and that is not to condemn the EPA or um, the Department of Environmental Services, and I think they need more direction, more supervision, both from the bottom here, uh, the uh, boots on the ground, Mr. Welch and his staff, uh, but from those in Washington, D.C. Uh, again, uh, on the August 16th letter that was uh, returned because of uh, Regina Barnes fine work and, and her leadership on this issue, and in those landfills is 20 times uh, the, the uh, safe limit, if there is one, for these carcinogens that's right in that site. There, there are no test wells, and I can go on and on, um, but uh, there's no ring of steel, there's no sense of urgency, um, and there's, there's no game plan. Um, it, Department of Environmental Services, they're talking a year, they're talking in two years, but we just shut down the well. Uh, I want to speak specifically, and then I'll get off the, uh, the uh, pulpit, um, about the Coakley uh, Landfill Group. Um, there is a Portsmouth City attorney known to probably many of you, and I'm talking about uh, a Jeff McMenemy, uh, a Seacoast Online article, August 15th. And this is the CLG. They, they took the cheapest cost, and now we have to deal with it 30 years later. Mr. Sullivan is, is quoted as saying, all I can say about the topic is that, un, is that it's under discussion between the group and the agencies. Now, this is a, a situation where our water quality is impacted. He is a town that is, is, he represents a town that is legally liable for economic costs associated with this. And Mark, Mark can address this. So I would like Mark to address the apparent conflict of interest that's clear to me, that he wants to mitigate any expenses from Portsmouth, who is not suffering any damages to their water quality as we are. They're not shutting down their wells, but Hampton is. And this man from Portsmouth uh, states that that's all he can say. And that concerns me. And uh, there's, there's children, there's grandchildren that are highly susceptible to these carcinogens when they're young, not so much old people. And they're drinking this water. And that's what we get from the head of the CLG, who was a contributor with Portsmouth and is legally liable, and they chose the short money route that we have to deal with today. His comments came after state officials said that the, quote, the migration of contaminants from, from groundwater and the resultant impacts on Berrysburg are unacceptable and need to be addressed. Okay. The 
people that are responsible for this CLG are Portsmouth, Northampton, Newington, the U.S. Air Force, and, and others. So we've got some municipalities um, that some of them enjoy very low tax rates, and they're incurring no cost, and we're perhaps uh, suffering because what may be pollutions from this site. Sullivan so declined to say what the EPA was asking the CLG to do to address the contamination at the site and in the surface water. But he said to require a pump and treat system, there would be, uh, that would be an extremely major undertaking. Further, he is quoted as saying, I'm a lawyer, that's a question left best for engineers. Well, maybe Mr. Sullivan, uh, the attorney, needs to be p replaced by an engineer. Now, finally, um, again, the, PFO, the PFOs and the PFOAs, uh, this thing has grown too much hair. It's too long in the tooth. It's being badly mismanaged by the CLG. That is a solution that is rendering us to the phenomena that we're closing wells, that we have no idea what's going on. And lastly, um, as, as Mark addresses that, um, we have two United States senators, both of whom were governors, uh, long, long tenures uh, in representative government in this state, uh, that are now United States senators. And I would ask uh, Mr. Welch, town attorney, under your direction, Mr. Um, Chairman, for next week to have that definitive, direct letter to our two U.S. senators, both former governors of this state, both that live down in the seacoast neck of the woods, both that are very well aware of the situation, and we're left here begging and wondering what we're going to do to keep clean water, that a letter go to them that they, they demand that the EPA uh, come to this board, come to the citizens of this town, and explain a much more celebrative response and, and, and uh, uh, course of action than an attorney in Portsmouth that perhaps may have a conflict of interest by virtue of his employment with the city of Portsmouth, uh, and to the to the denigration of our water supply here in this town, and that we ask those two United States senators that have served this this state so honorably, that they direct because they are the ones in charge in Washington. They direct the EPA, not the DES. They direct the EPA because they control the purse strings to do something about this landfill. Thirty years too late to protect the people of Hampton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to add on to what. Now, the article you're referring to is the same one where Portsmouth and Newington is seeking $17 million in relief from all this? Yeah, I didn't see that. I've been reading the law. Yeah. yeah. So, so those are two municipalities of the Coakley Land, Landfill Group. And also, the whole, the whole thing with the D.C. administration, when I sent that letter, well, when Fred, I had town manager send that out on behalf of the board, Hassan's office called me the next whatever business day it was and said that, you know, they received the letter and, um, but apparently, no, I don't, I'm going to be very careful when I say this, but because the current D.C. administration is going to be slicing and dicing the uh, EPA's Clean Water Act budget, that they didn't see anything that they could okay, do Okay, and I'll just one follow on, Mr. Chairman. New Hampshire is in the t bottom 10 percent of tax dollars returned to the state by virtue of their contribution. We elect senators uh, that, that were former governors. Uh, they, they carry the majority, and we expect results, and we don't expect excuses in uh, this, this cat and dog fight about Republicans and Democrats in the administration. A United States senator, just like uh, Selectman Barnes, is a very powerful person uh, that's uh, imbued with the powers of law, and we expect a, a much higher standard of response than that. Thank you. I agree with Mr. Bean. Thank you. What do you have for us, Mark? Okay. Well, first of all, uh, with regard to the article of uh, Max Sullivan's that was in the Portsmouth Herald on Thursday, August 17th, that happened to be the day that afternoon where we had our pre-hearing conference in front of the Public Utilities Commission where Eversource is seeking to uh, permission of the PUC to acquire Aquarian. And the very first exhibit that um, my office presented to the PUC regarding this in support of our statement that this is a company, namely Aquarian, which is in a state of uh, major upheaval, had to do with the fact that well number six was closed. And we presented that, not only that article, but also the test results from June, as well as the map to show the proximity of well six to other wells, including the well 22 that's being sought to be developed. 
and uh, well six is uh, is not by any stretch the nearest well to the Coakley situation but if the Coakley wells are if the Coakley contamination is the source of that particular uh, uh, PFCs then we've got a major problem with not only that well but the other intervening wells to the north that lie between and uh, what we did was bring to the attention of the PUC the fact uh, that this is a major problem that needs to be addressed now it is not one that uh, that uh, should bear uh, years more of study while people are suffering from contamination and uh, in July of this summer uh, Aquarian came here and presented to this board a uh, idea of having a centralized treatment plant for wells that included that well six that is the most contaminated as, as I see it this is the, a major step that if funded uh, can at least in the short run alleviate uh, some of this contamination while the EPA and the others to try to determine something that is necessary which is what is the source of that contamination because there are as I think the town manager mentioned uh, potential other candidates that have been men mentioned to us by the agencies and and that's going to be all well and good for us to find out but in the meantime this problem needs to be addressed and it needs to be addressed fast we did not get these results from Aquarian until last week almost two months after the well report had come out indicating the results that are the problem nor did DES get those same results so that when the town manager and I were on the phone with DES to ask them what's going on here and what are you doing about it um, basically we got a lot of hemming and hawing and and we just learned about it too well that's totally unacceptable if that's the management response to um, to um, contamination of Aquarian's own wells something needs to be done with regard to management now at the PUC Eversource which is not a water company it's an electric uh, distribution company are saying that they are one of their statements to the PUC to the effect that there would be no adverse effect on delivery of, of services says we're going to keep the same management in place that we've had already now management has recently been more interactive with, with us regarding these problems and we know this management but the fact remains that here is a major problem that has gone unaddressed and unnotified to us and that's not acceptable um, moreover there is a uh, proposed treatment plant here that may if, if the proper technology is utilized help to alleviate the PFC contamination but we don't know whatever sources commitment to do that is and we need to find it out fast and there is a schedule by which the PUC has given us to propound data requests which I've already got in draft form to determine that so um, what do you need from us um, the board has already indicated that we should intervene in those proceedings okay. and um, I think it's uh, I've explained to the board at the last meeting what are the reasons for us to intervene mm -hmm. and I think simply a consensus from this board that we uh, continue to press the issue make sure it's not swept under the rug make sure that uh, if Eversource is to acquire this company that they do so with open eyes and that they commit themselves to remediating this problem otherwise they're buying a big problem themselves and uh, as Mr. Bean has so eloquently stated to the PUC our children and grandchildren are drinking this water in the meantime it's not acceptable I just want to make one thing clear right now the water is still safe right the levels that have been detected in the well for two of the contaminants the only two for but which I, levels have been established are below what is said to be an acceptable that was in level. well six in well six and well six is offline right now Correct. it is offline. and I just don't want to create any panic in people thinking that 
that they're drinking contaminated water right now. No, I think that's important that we make sure that we're on a level, even keel here. Correct. And we're not going too much overboard. I mean, that, and I agree 100%. I think that in this case, the board is 100% behind making sure that things are done correctly, right. making sure that testing takes place. Right. But I think we're also don't want to create a situation that that doesn't exist right now. We don't want to create a situation in people's minds that's something that doesn't exist right now. So I think I, I'm just our our object, Mr. Chairman, in these proceedings, uh, first and foremost, is to uh, uh, energize not only the uh, PUC but also EverSorts itself to uh, address these issues and not just say business as usual. Absolutely, I agree with that 100%. And, the, and there has been this second round of testing, as Mr. Welch indicated, where results just came out, I got them Saturday, uh, to the effect that, yes, it confirms the presence of these. Now, it is the case, and Mr. Welch has said so, that the other PFCs that have been detected, there is no limit established no acceptable limit established. It's a scientific unknown at this point. Nevertheless, it can be treated. Right. Nevertheless, but, but I'm just I'm just cautioning that we that we don't go overboard with creating any kind of a panic. Okay. We don't need panic. Or we no, need I think that's our fact. That right now, the, that the water people are drinking is safe water to drink. Yes. Well, let me let me just say this, Mr. Chairman. Is uh, Mr. Welch is is uh, developed. Uh, uh, on his own initiative uh, because of these uh, emergencies, uh, a notification system of data. Hmm. Now, if I knew that there were the levels of an arsenic that were in that um, body of water where I paddleboard and where people are fishing, and maybe if they knew them as well, that they rise close, that's a very carcinogenic substance, Mr. Chairman, uh, responsible for, for heinous cancers, I think uh, there is no panic. But there is no information for people, and there is no game plan, and, and no one's talking about the word panic. We're talking information and data, and that's what we're requesting. And nobody's talking about panicking anybody. But I know that this report that hit my desk last week came out in January, eight months ago. And two years ago, um, me and everyone else that's in that water that runs out to Hampton Beach have no idea that the arsenic level is very close to the EPA limit. Now, I'm not panicking anybody, but I'm stating that as a fact. And I didn't know about it. It doesn't make me happy. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's uh, also people should be reassured that the board, in response to the large groundwater withdrawal permit application for a well that was dug five years ago, but that is almost 600 feet down in bedrock, um, has engaged an expert from UNH who has identified uh, problems that need to be addressed in advance of that well being pump tested and put online. One of which problems is uh, making sure that there is not infiltration of that well by these PFCs. And it also is also addressing the possibility of saltwater intrusion as well as arsenic levels. Right. And, so, and, and they're addressing that. And, and to its credit, the Department of Environmental Services has issued a letter dated August 3rd which is saying, stop, don't right. put this well online. Right. We need more uh, study and more right. So there, there are actions being taken place. Exactly. Yes. Now, yes. there are new tests being taken place. Yes. Aquarian uh, contacted me today, contacted yes. you today, Fred Wright, requested yes. to come into our next meeting and face the music and talk to us yep. about right. these issues. So these issues are, are being addressed. Now, they might not be being addressed exactly to what we want them to be, but they are being addressed. And I think that's important that we understand that. It's important that we understand that there need to be a lot more data collected. The EPA is requiring uh, the landfill, I'm talking about Coakley, yeah. uh, and their subsidiary uh, companies that are affected by that, to install additional test wells and, and uh, verification sources for groundwater. Uh, and groundwater contamination to the northwest of the landfill. We're to the southeast of the landfill. And uh, I've made this known, my desire known to uh, DES, uh, who are the ones who are actually monitoring this, that there should be, because of the contamination that we have already seen in well six, 
gosh knows where it's coming from, but it's there. There should be some test wells between Coakley and us, because oh, the only test wells at Coakley are in the landfill. If there's a plume of material moving in any direction, we need to know that, and the Environmental Protection Agency and DES needs to know it as well. It's important that they, in fact, verify that uh, there is no plume moving in our direction so that we can figure out where the material is coming from now. If you look, according to their results, at Coakley Landfill, um, we're talking 70 parts per trillion of P PF PFOs and PFCs uh, are, you know, in the contamination area, and Coakley itself has 1,358 parts per trillion of PFCs and PFOs. And if I may, Mr. Landfill. Chairman, yeah, and that, that, that 20 times the limit at the landfill is going somewhere. Well, that's the point. Uh, I closed a contaminated landfill in this state, and the only way that you effectively close a landfill of this type is, frankly, to dig it up and secure it. And that hasn't been done. Uh, they're, they're studying what needs to be done with it, and my, my just is it needs to be dug up and secured because otherwise this is going to continue to leach for the next 10,000 years. God knows what's going to happen in 10,000 years from now, assuming we're all still here. Okay. Well, the, the whole point of it is to uh, the agencies that are charged with these various um, responsibilities need to be uh, kept their nose to the grindstone and insist that the tests be done that the manager is suggesting and in the meantime um, that uh, available that the treatment plants that have already been proposed be implemented that there be a they be a commitment on the part of Eversource to do what has already been proposed I, I like to add on to that a little bit I know at the hearing on Thursday it wasn't really what I wanted to hear so talking about you know we're going to leave management alone let them do what they've been doing excellence high you know high quality all this well it's not high quality all right we had to shut a well down the stuff in the water that wasn't there before that's getting there now I understand okay maybe DES now is doing what they're supposed to do so is in the environmental protection agency but at the same time people are drinking the water all right you go by aquarium sign the sign says normal quality of water not normal to me not causing a panic but I got to tell you right now, we got to stay aggressive on it. We got to stay on top. We got to stay on top of the senators, the EPA, DES. I'm going to, I'm already blasting stuff out on social media and I'm going to continue to do it. And it's not to alarm people, it's to keep them informed. We do something with the town website, that would be great. But I didn't like what happened at the hearing, so I talked to Mark after and he arranged it with Eversource's council that I could talk to the financial analyst, who's res the one responsible for Eversource acquiring Aquarian. All right, so I went, I called him the next day, um, Career, I think, Moray or something is his last name, and he says what Eversource does have, now he realized what was said at the hearing, but at the same time they have, I can't remember whether he said monthly or quarterly meetings with all the departments. It's over 500 different types of uh, businesses ever source runs <clears throat> and you can bet you that while aquarium management may be left in place that they are definitely going to have someone that they got to report to on a regular basis uh -huh. and there is actually he has not called me today yet but Jim Hunt who is the senior vice president of regulatory affairs and the chief communications officer who is actually out in the field dealing with customers um, will be available to us if the acquisition with Eversource goes through. So if Aquarian wants to come to our next meeting, which I'm not even sure, when is our next meeting? Next Monday, next week. Next Monday night. Yeah, next Monday. Oh, I'm not going to be here next Monday. 31st, yeah. Oh, all right. I'll take your uh, place in the batter's box, Reg. Yeah, I wasn't aware we had a meeting next Monday. Yeah, it's on the schedule, yeah. So, um, all right, well, yeah, I guess our He's would like to maybe get a hold of him and have him come in here and uh, should talk okay. as well. I mean, I think we're all we're all in agreement that we're going to be aggressive. We're going to stay on this. We're going to stay on DES. We're going to stay on EPA. We're going to stay on Aquarium. We're going to stay on Evastor. I don't think there's any disagreement there whatsoever. We're going to ask for the facts. We're going to demand the facts. We're going to demand action. So, 
Yeah, I have, I have, I have right this follow-on. There's, there's some uh, issues that I raised about the Coakley Landfill Group, and I want you to talk about those, Mark. I think there's a, a severe conflict of interest uh, with a disincentive to uh, burden the people uh, that are associated with that. I think we have United States senators, and we have a U.S. Air Force agency that was a pollutant, and they are U.S. senators. Lo and behold, Mr. Welch isn't going to crack that nut, but a U.S. senator can. I will speak to the. Uh, uh, this is this is just part of the. Um, if, if you're on TV, part of the water issue that. To has uh, inundated us, no pun intended. Uh, and Regina was there, I was there, Mark was there, um, uh, Representative Cushing was there, and who else am I missing? Is that it? Indeed. Uh, and Representative Messner. And the success of the uh, day was that uh, everyone was allowed to speak. And Mr. Welch and I have been up there before, and, and you couldn't. Um, but after the uh, 12 lawyers in the room got done arguing, Mr. Chairman, about RSA uh, 369 colon 8 and uh, did their, their legal parsing of words, we, we got to speak. My takeaway from the hearing is that, uh, um, uh, that the, uh, the commission did hear the concerns of, of this town, that they did condition uh, uh, further um, um, uh, a dialogue between uh, the interveners uh, and Eversource. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. That's something we left out. And that um, you're developing uh, uh, a list of uh, our demands that Correct. are going to be associated with that, and that uh, there, there'll be some dialogue with that. My, my, my sense of Aquarian is that one way or another, um, we're going to have to deal with that, whether Aquarian isn't sold uh, or there is no stock purchase or Eversource takes it, and we, ha we have to be vigilant. Um, but uh, there's, there's no choice in the matter. Um, if, it, if, if it's approved, there's still going to be some water quality issues, and uh, um, there's, there's going to be some capital investment by that company, whichever it is, Eversource or Aquarian. Mm -hmm. And when the uh, RSA states that uh, you can't have these things go forward without uh, um, a, uh, a disservice to rates, well, um, we've seen what happens when you take the cheap method over at Coakley Landfill Group. You get pollution. If you want cheap water rates, then drink carcinogens, because that's what's going on now. And uh, there needs to be, from the ground up, um, uh, a real capital investment in that. And, and we want to um, participate in that, as the chairman says. And Aquarian's not our enemy. They're a corporation. And those, those gentlemen have become more responsive, and they're going to have to be. Um, but I would like uh, you to address um, what you think is in the best interest of Hampton going forward with an attorney from Portsmouth that uh, thinks a couple years down the road he's not an engineer, and uh, what are his conflicts of interest. Please, thank you. Sure. Well, as I said, I think the first priority is to make sure that the water situation we have now is remediated, regardless of, the, of where it comes from. I think there are, and uh, I, I got that. And we're, 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 you know, that's like saying, you know, it was a nice sunny day today. What I want to know is about the Coakley Landfill Group. It's been 30 years, and we're closing wells. And I want to know what we're doing about an attorney that heads it, that's an employee of the city of Portsmouth, that's looking for the cheap way out, and we're closing wells. And I want you to address that conflict of interest. Sure. Now, sure. Please. Yes. Um, well, first of all, that any agency is going to say to us that we need to determine the source of the problem. And when Fred and I were on the phone with the agency, they mentioned uh, other potential sources besides Coakley. But in any event, the Coakley group ought to be, because they have a pot of money that the agencies are telling them how to spend, uh, we need to make sure that, the, that the, uh, the money is being spent in a way that is not the benefit of those who caused the problem in the first place. And it does p bother me that uh, the, the individual who is at the head of that group um, is uh, an attorney who represents one of the responsible parties. It's sort of like the fox guarding the chicken house, and that's a problem. So what are we going to do about it? Well, first of all, the agencies who are charged with this uh, need to knuckle down and, uh, and get this solved. Uh, and, and do have the ability to force that to happen. Um, I've been involved in one of the largest, uh, longest cases in New Hampshire history involving the Kingston Steel Drum Factory. That was out in Kingston. It was a barrel reconditioning plant, a laundry service, but let basically laundering chemicals into the ground. Uh, what happened there was that the EPA and the um, state of New Hampshire got involved and eventually brought an action uh, successfully against the perpetrators, and uh, getting back to the water, though, right? And getting back to this attorney, that right, that 
Mr. Bean is talking about. Right. Has anybody filed a conflict of interest, and is it, can anybody file a conflict that they believe there's a, besides just relying upon DES or EPA, if, 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 if somebody believes there is an issue here, can they file a conflict of interest? Um, under the uh, CERCLA statute, uh, and especially the RICRA statute, two, two of the statutes involved, uh, municipalities do have the ability to intervene in ongoing cases. To my knowledge, there is not an ongoing case at this point, but a case could be brought if that's what, what it takes. Okay, let, uh, let, me, let, me just in, let me just interrupt here. We can let, let me just, Mr. Jewell, let me interrupt. Yeah. Okay, yeah. you work for the Board of Selectmen. Right. Okay, you read that article that was done by Seacoast Online. Right. Okay, there's a conflict of interest, and you've got the person running it that has been quarterbacking the, the, the lowest expense, it has a financial interest to in better his city, not Hampton. Uh, what letter, what communication, what motion do we put forward tonight to empower you to send the letter or pick up the phone and start the discussion with Mr. Sullivan that we think that there is a conflict of interest? You work for us. Right. Thank and you. I think you've just stated what the motion should be. Okay. Well, frame it for us, please. Sure. The motion should be to empower the town manager and myself to contact uh, the uh, Coakley Landfill Group and its uh, acting uh, chairman to uh, complain about the fact of uh, the, parent, the apparent conflict of interest. I'll make the motion. Second. Favor? Okay. Thank you. And, and Mr. Gerald, you're doing an outstanding job. You're wearing a lot of hats, and thank you for your effort. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I think we're going to move on. I think so. so. I need a drink. <laughs> Water? Water, yeah. yes. <laughs> Are you buying? Uh, do we have any other questions? Did, did we go around for questions for the uh, town manager? I have one, but it's on the next uh, next issue. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, I had one, and let me just go back. and. Oh, are there any plans to plant trees with the trees that have been taken down? My understanding is the Public Works Department is, in fact, working on that because they would like to start planting some trees. Okay. I just don't know when that's going to come about, but it, it needs to come about in the next month or so so that we, they'll make it through the winter time. Okay. Very good. All right. Uh, old business. Supplemental dog warrant. Mr. B. Uh, Mr. Uh, well, we have, we have two issues on that, right? Yes, so we do. That we need to add these two people to it? Yes, we do. Uh, and I'll make a motion that yeah. we... Uh, In one case, the uh, animal was reported dead, but then the vaccination came in from the veterinarian saying it was vaccinated with the rabies right. after it was reported to have died. Oh, we're talking about like six dollars and fifty cents or something, right? Actually, no. We're talking now something in the order of more like seventy-five dollars a piece. But originally, right, yeah. right, right. <laughs> right. You, you spend six fifty, you license the dog, and it goes away. So I'll make the motion that we add these two, two dogs, Is it two dogs, two, two dogs to the dog warrant. Second. All in favor. And while we're talking on the dog warrant, uh, people that need to know that the whole issue about dogs and registering them is a state issue it is not something the town does it is something that the state requires us to do the state requires us to at the certain point in time to put out the dog warrant because people are not paying their taxes on it the state also the, the whole way it is funded and we've had a number of people that have come into the town clerk and they've been very verbal abusive to her office and herself and her staff and uh, there's no reason for that at all. This is something that they did. You know, I've heard people uh, have heard it said, well, you didn't notify us. Well, they did send out emails. They did send out. Four times. And you know when, when your, your car's due for registration, the state doesn't send you out a notice that says, oh, by the way, don't forget to get a register your car. You know, they do send you for your, your license for your, but if you don't do it, that's your fault. You get stopped without a car, without a license for driving, you're going to have to pay the fine. You go, you're getting caught without registering your dog, you have to pay the fine. It is not our town employees or our town clerk who's responsible for that. And I think some of the uh, some of the statements I heard and some of the the name calling I heard is, is totally unacceptable. And if I was the town clerk and somebody started that, I would shut the door, shut the thing, and go to lunch. 
And if those people didn't like that, too bad, because they're not here to take verbal abuse from anybody. 100% agree with Mr. Russell. Mr. Uh, Bridal. <laughs> I'm not doing well tonight. <laughs> I need a drink. <laughs> New business. Uh, Mr. Chairman, under old business, oh, okay. uh, the manager, I, I guess uh, under the consent agenda, um, there is before the board a, a quick claim deed for the Arnold property and the Martell property to uh, SAU 90 uh, pursuant to the Warren article passed, um, which uh, is effectuated by virtue of the school district going forward with the um, yep. uh, renovations at the academy. And so uh, I have worked with uh, SAU 90's council to put this deed in a signable form for the board, and that is before you tonight. Okay. I would ask uh, that the board um, make a motion that it sign this deed first. So moved and uh, second. All in favor? Unanimous. We'll get the deed? Uh, yes, and the second piece of that is the signed it. Uh, council per SAU 90 has asked me to uh, ask the board to appoint one of your number, perhaps you, Mr. Chairman, to uh, sign any other uh, side documents that may be required for the board in connection with the transaction. So moved. Second. All in favor? We got it. Thank you. Thank you. I have one thing on old business. Yes. If since Aquarian is going to come here next week. They requested to come. All right. So well, if they are granted permission to come to yeah. our meeting, could we please ask them? I really want to have a public hearing on groundwater permits, current quality sure. level, and you know, it was a little talk about it with the commission as I don't necessarily believe we need to have the commissioners here, but I'd like to invite, uh, invite state reps, maybe senators even, uh, U.S. senators, state senator. Why um, don't you, uh, why don't you make the motion? Write up exactly what you want and we'll bring it up. Yes, and then also I just want to make sure that Aquarian and I also would like to see if this Jim Hunt would come mm -hmm. as well. Right. So for the hearing? Can, for the hearing. Yeah, good idea. Yeah. So, you know, maybe sometime after our summer schedule is, all, you know. Yeah, the week after Labor Maybe day. the end of. Yeah, well, or two I, weeks no, after. No, no, yeah, maybe like toward the end of September, I think, okay. maybe. That's well, fine. actually, uh, because the PUC. Uh, refused to, despite several requests to do so, that it conduct a public hearing on this acquisition right. down here, that we conduct a public hearing before they before they actually conduct the hearing on the acquisition. When is that hearing going to be? Uh, that'll be in the latter part of September. So oh, we did it maybe like the 18th mm -hmm. or something yeah, like that? Middle of, middle of yeah, September. Mid All right. Yeah, but if you want, Mr. Chairman, I'll, I can type, I can email yeah, it to you or something. All right. Thanks. Okay. New business. Can I give one, one? Yep. It's a real quick one. And, um, it's not, not, uh, the Place Cove stair thing, I know you're oh, working geez, on it. Yeah. See, they're killing me when I go to the beach. Yeah. I got to get a new beach. We only have one. <laughs> Can you help me out? And, and it's legitimate. Go ahead. We, we have been refused for two years in a row a permit to fix those stairs permanently. Uh, we now have a permit from the Department of Environmental Services to in fact put in a permanent set of stairs and Public Works has contacted someone to design and build them. So they will be permanent, they will be in place, and they won't be the stones that are there. Okay. Actual stairs with railings. Okay. And, and without impacting the environment, Mr. Welch, if I just real quickly, Mr. Uh, Chairman, is it's it's you got to go single file with the width that it is now. And if you just move the... Oh, it'll be wider and it'll be sturdier. And, it, so, yeah. you know, people are going right. up with what they take to the beach, the, what do you call those, yeah. the paddle boards, and it's got to be, you know, eight, ten yeah. feet wide. Right. Thank you. No, we agree. <laughs> New business approval of the construction cost estimate for 180 Ashworth Ave, Dunnick Corporation. The figure, Mr. Chairman, is $35,765 that will impact on property. Therefore, they need to put a bond up for that amount of money. Okay. We need a motion. Need a motion to request a bond for $35,765 from that corporation. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. Good. Uh, closing comments. Now, Mr. Chairman, if I could ask the board to entertain a motion to go into a non-public session under RSA 91 hyphen capital A colon three 
Roman two, uh, small a, and a small e. I would appreciate that. Okay. We have a motion. motion. Second. Second. Uh, roll call. Aye. 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 Thank Unanimous. you. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Channel 22. I never got that.